Oh, it's a great day to be in the Lord's house, isn't it? I need a little more oomph. Okay, it's a great day to be in the Lord's house. Amen. All right, now we're cooking with bear grease. It is a patriotic day today, and we are celebrating what it means to be an American Christian. And uh, there are a lot of uh, churches that no longer do this. A lot of the churches don't have an American flag in their sanctuary because they, for whatever reason. But uh, we do. And we do our pledges, and we are patriotic, and there are reasons for that. But also, there are some reasons in the Bible that we want to talk about here this morning. Why don't we do this sort of thing, okay? First of all, let's all stand. We're going to have uh, the reading of the Word of God here tonight, this morning. Y'all better pray for me. I was talking to say, let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. A little, <laughs> a little premature for that. But here's one in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament. From the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. They go off into Babylonian captivity. Here's what God tells them. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses, dwell in them, plant gardens, eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, so that they may bear sons and daughters, that you may be increased there and not diminished. Verse 7, and seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive, and pray to the Lord for it, for in its peace you will have peace. And here in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul writing to a young preacher named Timothy, it is First Timothy, not Second Timothy, like it says in your th anyway. First Timothy chapter two, Paul says this. Therefore, I exhort, uh, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, again, we just want to say thank you. We can't count the blessings you give us, Lord, in, in every situation, whether it's our, the country in which we're born, whether it's the next breath of air for ourselves, whether it's the prayers that you've answered, for the privilege of hearing the gospel and the, having a place to come to church and the, a group of brothers and sisters to fellowship with. Lord, there are so many, many blessings that you've given us, and we want to say thank you for every single one of them. We pray, Lord, that, again, that you're honored and glorified here today. I ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit to bring this message for your honor and for your glory. For you and you alone are worthy. And Lord, again, we pray your blessings, your mighty hand, and the moving of your Spirit upon our nation, upon our country, dear God. Be merciful to us and draw us back to you, Lord. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you. In the holy and almighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, and our King, we all pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Smile at your neighbor and have a seat. If you are a child of God, you have two citizenships. You have dual citizenship. You have a, an earthly citizenship as a United States citizen, and you have a, a spiritual citizenship in, in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. You have a physical citizenship. You have a spiritual citizenship. You have a, a, a temporary citizenship here. Your American citizenship will expire when you do. And then you have a, an eternal citizenship in heaven, which will never expire because you have eternal everlasting life, right? You have a dual citizenship. It says over in the book of Philippians, it says that our citizenship is in heaven, okay? You have, you have, a, you have a civil government down here made of president and congress and governors and police force and uh, the judicial system and everything that has to do with civil government. You have a spiritual government made of God, our King, the Lord Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, the, the word of God. This is our laws and our, and our, you know, our commandments and all these things. You have the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the work of the ministry of the angels of the Lord God Almighty and the presence and power of God through his people and faith and, and all the things that God gives us in the spiritual realm. I'm going to tell you that a good Christian is a good citizen in both realms. Amen? That's pretty weak. We'll just go on. 
You need to be a good, are you a good citizen in the kingdom of God? You better be, because not only are you a citizen in the kingdom of God, but you're a member of the noble family, the royalty of God. Amen? God is your heavenly Father. You have much great responsibility to the family business, also known as the kingdom of God. At the same time, God has put you down here on this earth in this physical realm and has made you a citizen of your country. And as such, you are duty-bound to live a, a moral, ethical, Christian life as it relates to the citizenship of this that you have here in, in the United States of America. The Bible tells us over in Romans chapter 13 that we are required of God to show respect to our civil government because behind the power and the authority of the civil government is the power and authority of God Almighty. He works through human agency. Okay? You say, well, my, my officials are not Christian. Look, none of these officials back in the day were Christian. The, the, the Old Testament Jews, they're going to, over to Babylon and in the, in the Babylonian Empire. They're not Christian. And in the New Testament, Paul writes to Timothy because they're ministering in the, under the, in the Roman Empire. They're not Christian either. God didn't say just pray for your Christian officials. They're hard to pick out anymore anyway, aren't they? But it doesn't even matter about that. God says, no, you pray for them. Why? Because they got a job to do, and we want them to do their job according to the wisdom and the power of God, whether they understand it or know it or acknowledge it or not. Amen? Amen. Because God is still God Almighty. Now, again, in, uh, in, in, in our world, there are a lot of Christians and a lot of churches, a lot of whatever, that, that want to take, uh, I don't know, if they call it separation church and state or whatever, and, and they don't have patriotic stuff in their, in their programming and all these things. Well, you know, to each his own, it's a free country, amen? Oh, yeah, it's a free country, amen? Amen. amen. God bless you for being here today. And we'll worship as we please, amen? Because it's a free country, we're free to do these things. Now... Now, now, again, your commitment and dedication to your king who saved your soul and the souls of your family and has built heaven for you and has listened to you and answered your prayers and taken care of you, what we have in Christ far exceeds what we have in this life. Amen? Now, I like being American. I'm telling you, I don't want to live anyplace else. I've been, I've, I've been some other places. Glad to get back home. Hmm? And, and look, our, our country's got problems, it always has, but let me tell you something. You want to see some problems, you go in other countries, and you'll say, uh, give, me, give me a good old-fashioned American problems, right? Now, there are reasons why we have like a patriotic day, and we say the Pledge of Allegiance, you know, one nation under God, right? And we, we do these things, and, and here's, here's some reasons why. First of all, we're just, we're, y'all are just a traditional bunch of people, amen? You just are. You've been, you've, been, well, you've been here your whole life so far. And it's just the way we do things out here, but there's more to it than there are reasons behind it. We want to be good patriots because, again, like I said, a, a good Christian is going to be a good citizen down here, just like you are in the, in the kingdom of God, right? You, got, you're requ you are required of God to be a good citizen, to keep the laws and to appreciate the blessings. And, and God has been good to this country. He has blessed our nation. And I know there's a big argument about just how much Christianity was back in the day, 200. We're not going to talk about all that, but I, you just know yourself that a lot of what goes on in our, in our, uh, in our Constitution and in the early fathers and all these things, Right, wrong, or sideways, a lot of it is based on the principles of the Word of God. And because of that, God has blessed our country. Our, our, our Constitution, our laws, they, they have their roots in the principles laid down in the Word of God. And God is duty-bound to bless those. Okay? Now, another reason why we ought to be good patriots is because we have received a whole lot of the blessings of God through being citizens of this country. Hmm? 
How many of you were born, were you born here? You've been here a long time, right? Right? Now, whether you were born here 100 years ago or whether you, uh, you're, you're natural, naturalized citizens, or I get my terms mixed up, but you know what I mean, you know? You know what I mean. However you landed here, this is, a, this is the work of sovereign God. And there are blessings that you and I don't even realize that we have gotten by the hand of God through being an American citizen that we don't even think about. Now we just waltz into church anytime we want to, right? I've been to a country where Christianity was not legal. Evangelism was not legal. You don't, yeah, you don't go around and say, hey, do you know Jesus? No, you got to get you in trouble. I like it better here. I've been in countries where people are still living without electricity. I like it better here. The problem I have with closing my closet is that they're too small because I have too much to eat in this country. Amen? Oh, we, uh, you know, look, come on now. We gripe and complain about the economy, but it hadn't slowed us down at all. We're still coming and going as we please. We're still, look, 4th of July is on Thursday. We're going to eat something that's bad for us, right? We, some of you are going to go to the lake, you're going to pop a firecracker, you get together with your family. Look, compared to the rest of the world, we got it made. And the world's out there thinking, why are these Americans so unhappy when they have everything? Now, that's a good question. We are so very, 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 very blessed in this country. Now, we, we live in what at least used to be called the Bible Belt, and it goes like this. There's church on every corner. Made a lot of churches, you know. It, it's, sometimes it's hard to grow, grow a church because everybody's here voluntarily. And if you don't like this one, well, there's another one a few blocks away. Right? I mean, gas is high, but we don't have to drive it 10 miles, 10 minutes or 10 miles to get to a dozen other churches. We'll pick one that we like. Churches are like salad bar. If you don't like peppers, then get a tomato, right? And we just pick and choose because we're blessed like that. We got Bibles all over the place. We got it on the radio, on the TV, on the internet. We got it on our phone. We got the Word of God. We got the Gospel. We got Christian music. Everybody listens to their own favorite Christian music. We have religious freedom in this country. And I'm telling you, it's a wonderful, amazing, glorious thing that God has blessed us with. And we need to thank God for our religious freedom. And we need to take our stand for religious freedom. Please do not mix your religion with your political preferences. Whatever party or affiliation that you have, there's a variety in this building. That's all fine, well, and good. But your first allegiance is to your king, to your savior. Amen? It don't matter who won the, wins the election this year, there'll be another in two to four years anyway. It changes. The Word of God never changes. Your Savior never changes. Now let's look at our scriptures here and see what God's been telling us about these things the whole time. Okay, I think you find, find this interesting. I know I sure did. Back in Jeremiah, can you, can you bump up back up there to, uh, uh, yeah, go, go down one slide. Let's get verse number seven there. I want you to look at verse number seven. Now, here's God's people, and they're going someplace where they're going to be pilgrims, strangers, and aliens, okay? They're going to be foreign nationals living in a different place, resident foreigners. Now, the Bible tells us, again, that we as Christians are pilgrims, sojourners, foreigners, and aliens. We're just passing through. And God says to his people who got to go live in, a, in a, uh, an environment under a government that was not to their liking, that none of the officials cared about their God, that nothing shut down on Sunday is just another day to the Babylonians. And here's what God said to them. He said, but when you go into captivity now, that's rough, you seek the peace of the city where I've called you to go. I'm sending you to Babylon. You pray for Babylon. Now, wait a minute. They're the ungodly, idol-worshiping, devil-worshiping bunch of It's horrible. But you pray for them because I'm sending you in the middle of it. Okay? I'm causing you to be carried away. And you pray to the Lord 
See those all caps? L-O-R-D. That's Jehovah, the Lord God Almighty. You pray to God Almighty, who is bigger than all the Babylonian gods put together. Amen? You go to Babylon, and you live amongst these heathen, and you pray to your God for the city and the area where you live. For in its peace, you will have peace. Why are we patriots? Why, do we, why are we good citizens? Why do we pledge to our country? Why do we pray for our country? Because in the, in the peace of America, is the peace for us as well. Now here's what's interesting about the word peace. It's used three times in this one verse. The, the word peace here is uh, shalom. You ever hear that? Shalom? That's probably the one Hebrew word we all know. Shalom, right? What does it mean? Uh, hello, <laughs> goodbye, and a whole lot more. Shalom means peace, prosperity, blessing, uh, welfare, well-being, hand of God upon you. It's everything that you hope God does for you wrapped up in this one lovely word, shalom. So he says, you seek the shalom of the, of the city where you go, the peace, the prosperity, the, the hand of God to bless, to take care of people around you and in the, your city or your area or your country where I'm sending you because in its peace and prosperity and blessing, you will find peace and prosperity and blessing. Even though you're a captive in a foreign land, even though you're an alien, a, a, a foreign resident forced to live there, and you don't fit in, and you're not like the people around you, and you hopefully you're just passing through, and you, you didn't choose this government in this situation, but you're stuck with it anyway, God says, here's what you do. Don't stir up a rebellion and, and don't all these things. He said, you pray for your area. You pray for your country. You pray for your people, and you support it, and you ask God's blessings on it. Amen? That's why we do what we do. It's a commandment of God in the Old Testament. Now let's scroll on down to see the one in the New Testament there. Down there in Timothy. Here's Paul. He says what? Pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. Verse number two, pray for your kings. Or in our situation, we don't have a king, but we got president and congress and governors and law enforcement and judges and, and whole, you know, we got government, right? We got plenty of it. That's who he's talking about. All who are in authority. And for us, it's elected, it's appointed, it doesn't matter. You are required of God to be respectful to authority, whether you like the person, whether they are Christian or not, okay? You can read that later on in Romans chapter 13, okay? But we're going to keep on going here. I want, he says, I want you to pray for your civil government. Everybody that's in authority. And by the way, that goes for the kids and the parents, and the kids and the teachers, and for the employee and your boss. God has got all kind of authorities stacked up over you, okay? You pray for the people that are in charge, that they will do the will of God whether they even know it or not, amen? Whether they even know it or not. It's amazing how many people accidentally do the God's will, God's will because we don't believe in accidents, we believe in providence, the mighty hand of Almighty God. I want you to pray for them. Why? Verse number two, so that we can lead a quiet, peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. I like a quiet and peaceable life, don't you? Right? All my drama, I just want to see that on TV. I don't need drama in my life, do you? I don't need chaos in my life. He said, I, I, I want, God says, I want you to have a quiet, peaceable life where you're just, you're fine, you're okay. You're living in peace. I want you to live that life in all godliness. <laughs> what does godliness mean? That means you're living according to the morals and the ethics that you find in the Word of God. You're living a Christian life. And he says, in all reverence. What does reverence mean? Reverence means that you honor and respect the ultimate authority of the Lord God Almighty. So let me just boil it down and tell you what he's talking about in, in the here and the now. So that you can live a Christian life and you can go to church when you want to. He's talking about religious freedom here. God said, I want you to live in a place that's got religious freedom. 
Now the Babylonians said, you know what? We don't care what you worship. Because we worship everything there is. And the Romans about the same thing. We don't care, we don't care who, what you worship. Because you're this is Rome. We got idols. We believe in the Roman gods. They're just dozens and hundreds of them. So we're not worried about that. We're worried about whether or not you're going to stay in line and pay your taxes. That sound about right? We'll give you religious freedom. You don't want to work on whatever your Sabbath is? Okay. But you're going to pay your taxes. And you're going to be good citizens because, as Romans 13 says, they do not bear the sword in vain. Right? Right. And so, because of our conscience that God's behind it, and because to save our own skin, be a good citizen. But he's talking about religious freedom here, that we're able to come and go as we please. Now, look, here, here's the reason why this is important. I used to think that, well, you know, give us chaos and give us war because that's going to scare people, and they're gonna, really going to turn to Christ. You know what? It doesn't really work that way. A lot of foxhole religion, there were a lot of, when, uh, when World War II uh, broke out and the people in London all gathered into their, their churches, why are you going to go to the churches when the bombs start falling? You, because you're going to pray. You're going to pray for God's protection, okay? But it just went on and on and on until finally everybody got tired of praying. They go to the churches and so they could, so they could uh, get down behind the back pew and, uh, and roll dice and gamble. And they, well, I'm in church. Maybe I won't get hit. None of that going on back there today, is there? <laughs> Foxhole religion is fine until, the, until, until chaos ends. And then people go right on about their business. We don't need a crisis on the outside to get our attention to, with God, although this, God's free to use whatever he wants to do, and that's fine. But we need to cross us on the inside, understanding that we're lost and sinful before God. That Jesus died for our sins on the cross of Calvary, rose again the third day, and if we put our faith and trust in him, he'll save us from our sins and keep us out of hell. That's all inside stuff. Because here's what we know now, or at least what I've learned now. When you're living in chaos, when there are war in your streets, you're not interested in what the preacher has to say or going to a Bible study. It's hard to be interested in reading the Word of God when your children are hungry and you're trying to survive. When you live in a war-torn, chaotic world and everything is just about keeping you and yours alive and safe another day, you just run out of energy and mental brain power to pay attention to the inner stuff. You're not interested in music and arts and, and, and vacation. You're too busy staying alive and taking care of yours. And so we've discovered in it, we, we, we turned a corner years ago in like in our missions where we understood you want to go into a place and do any good for Jesus, you start with free medicine, free food, drill them a well. Do some humanitarian stuff for them first. And when they come into the clinic and they've got some medicine and their kids are feeling better and they got food for their family, now you can set them down and say, let me tell you why we do this. Because God loves you so much. He gave his only son. And we're trying to share the love of Jesus. with. Them. And that's when people say, oh, that's what Christianity is all about. We need a quiet and peaceable place so that we can travel about Share the love of Jesus. Share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ without getting thrown in jail. And also where we can plant churches. Now, I know that God can do this anyway. He did it, still done it in China under, the, under communism and all these other things. But generally speaking, this is what God says. He says, I want all men to be saved. That means I want the, I want, what do you tell us to do with the gospel? To, to preach to what? To who? To every creature. To every creature. 
Well, you need to be able to, to do that in your country. You need the freedom. You need religious liberty so that you can share the gospel and plant churches like this one. This one's been here almost 98, well, yeah, 98 years. And here we are still today because God has honored his word and he's brought us up through, and he's blessed us with this kind of religious freedom so we can come and go and we can preach, we can teach. I'm, you know, I'm on the internet now. If anybody watches it or not, I'm there. We got Bibles all over the place. We have more opportunities than we're taking advantage of because we have more freedom than we know what to do with. And this is why we have Patriotic Day. We love our country because it's our country and it's near and dear to us. We've been blessed here our whole lives. And we've, we've enjoyed the mighty hand of God on our lives from, from before we were born to this very day. And the Old Testament and the New Testament says, yeah, you're not, your, your soul is not from here. Yeah, you're a citizen of another realm. Yeah, you're, you're an alien, a, a sojourner. You're a, a foreign r resident living temporarily on this earth. That's all true. But while you are here, you have a responsibility to your land and to your country and to your people, to the city where I've placed you, to the folk around you. God wants them saved. He wants them to hear the gospel. And I'm glad we've got a plethora of churches around here. And there, in a lot of our country, it's just not that way at all. Very few churches, and even fewer preachers. But we're very, very blessed, and we want to thank God for every single bit of it. Amen? So when 4th of July rolls around, Independence Day, we thank God for our country, for our freedom. We're going to be good Americans, and we're going to be good Christians, and we're going to try, do our best to share the love and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with every person in the world because that's our job while we're here. Now my tire here says, God bless America. That's not just a slogan, is it? That's a sincere prayer from the hearts of Christians because we know which God we're talking about. Amen? We know which God is this one. God bless America. It's our prayer for our country. And that's why we pray and pop a firecracker get together with family we say the blessing over that food we go to church on Sunday because a good Christian is a good citizen let's pray Lord again we love you thank you so much you have been so good so kind we are beyond blessed to have been given a, a place in this country where we have the freedom to have heard the gospel. Lord, I know myself, I got to hear the gospel a thousand times before I ever said yes to Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that there was freedom enough for me to hear the gospel more than 900 times, Lord. You're so kind and so gracious and so patient. Thank you for your sovereignty. Thank you for your, your might and your power. We pray, Lord God, again for our country. Lord, this is our sincere prayer. Dear God, bless America. Draw us back to you, Lord. Whatever Christianity was in the past and whatever there might be in the future, Lord, we just look to you right now in the present that you'd be kind, that you would be merciful. We have a lot of problems, a lot of issues, dear God, but we also know that you have told your people to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Lord, help us to meet our responsibilities, whether anyone else does or not, that our Christian responsibility to be good citizens and good Christians to live right, to keep the laws, to share the love of Jesus wherever we go, to be your salt and be your light. Lord, we want to thank you that right now today we know that there's been few generations now who have been praying for revival for this country. Lord, we just know that by our faith that sooner or later you're going to hear and answer all those prayers. We look forward to what you, oh God, are going to do in this country. Bless us and keep us safe, Lord. Bless our elected officials, our appointed officials, Lord. Parents and teachers and police officers and anyone who has authority that's come from the hand of God. Be with our troops 
and uh, the folk all over the country and all over the world, dear Lord. We ask your richest blessings, the mighty hand of God, to strengthen our faith, Lord, and remind us to pray and to love for the people around us. So in Jesus' holy and almighty and lovely name, we pray. Amen. Stand with